Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Think with a Drink. This is the weekly webinar show brought to you by the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. And this week, Craig, we got a fun one. This is called No Pension, No Problem. As you can see behind us, it says the number three fear is for retirees is running out of money. Would you like to guess what number one is? Uh, dying? <laughs> no. <laughs> dying. No, it's not oh. dying. Oh. The number one concern is actually dementia. It's Alzheimer's. It's, it's, oh, it's, well, then. Number don't... two is actually health care, paying for health care and retirement. So we're going to go through no pension, no problem, talking about different ways to make sure that you don't run out of money in retirement. Can't help you with the dying part. Can't help you with the dying okay. part. Next one. All right, so uh, Think With a Drink is brought to you by the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. You can find us on the web. It's ariesfoundation.org. The mission behind Aries is trying to help everyone have a better relationship with their money, because whether you realize it or not, you are in a relationship with your money, and just like every other personal relationship that you have, there are behaviors and triggers that can cause us to act, well, a little er emotionally sometimes when it comes to dealing with our money. My name is Tom Alessi. I am the president of the Aries Foundation. I have been in financial services for 24 years. I am an investment advisor. That means I act as a fiduciary whenever giving guidance or advice to my clients. I'd like to give my vice president a chance to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Craig Richardson. I'm the vice president of the Aries Foundation. I've been in financial services a little over 20 years now, and I specialize in working with families and individuals to help them define their financial goals and have a better relationship with their money. Next slide. So this is just a little bit about what we're going to go through. So here we are. This is, we call this Think With a Drink. And the reason we call it Think With a Drink is that we try to make money matters, financial, just a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more casual. And we can't think of a better way to do that than if we have something cold to sip on, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. In this case, we're drinking, this is Oktoberfest from Goose Island. And the reason, Craig, for the tie-in there is we're talking about retirement. It had island in the title, so it was sort of a little tie-in. All right, I was stretching it with that one. Well, you're but going anyway. on a big vacation, right, on the island, right. <laughs> it's an island. <laughs> but for uh, Oktoberfest, when we talk about beer pairings, you might be thinking, you know, sausages and braid meats on the grill, those type of things, pretzels, absolutely anything mm -hmm. like that. So let's say skull. Skull. Okay, next slide. All right, so our agenda for this evening is going to be real quick. Uh, Social Security, we got to talk about that. This thing that's out there that's called the 4% rule, how distribution versus accumulation works, why sequence of return risk is so important, and then finally we'll tie it in with what's in your buckets. Next. So understanding Social Security, and so real quick, go to the next slide because we'll just... We're going to talk about Social Security and what Social Security means, right? So the first myth for retirement is that our industry has sort of done a bad job with trying to explain how it all works. Because really the idea is all you've been taught or talked about is accumulation. When in reality, retirement is all about cash flow. See, cash flow equals certainty, and certainty will take the pressure off of money. And when we talk about secure, uh, Social Security, the next slide, Social Security is all about cash flow. All right, so real quick, because Social Security throws more acronyms out of you than anybody. So FRA and PRA, PIA. So FRA just stands for full retirement age. Depending on your year of birth, when your full retirement age comes into play, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're born after 1960, it's age 67, right? I'm not sure you can see that on the screen, but it's age 67. So for majority of folks, it's age 67. That's your full retirement age. That PIA thing, Craig, Yes. that's the amount that you're going to get on a monthly basis from Social Security. Great. Probably Next slide, that's your amount. PIA, yes. right? And so here's what works, because we get this question a lot, right? When can I collect? When mm -hmm. can I take my Social Security? So you can collect as early as age 62. However, there is a penalty that will occur if you do that. The penalty is a 6.25 reduction in your benefit amount Ugh. every year prior to FRA. Ah, so the better question is when should I collect? When should you collect? Yeah. So 
a lot of that goes into when should you collect is about uh, a lot has to do with your health, mm -hmm. family history, longevity. I mean, if you're somebody whose family history says we're not making it to age 80, right? Then I want to take it earlier. <laughs> Right. So that, but it's difficult, right? Because you know, if you go just based on your family's history, medicines come so far, health changes occur. You know, there's uh, treatments for things that didn't have 20 years ago. So you just have no idea what your longevity is going to be when you retire at whatever age. Right. Right. That is a consideration. And then the other side of this is, if you go past FRA, your benefit amount goes up just a little tick under 0 0.70 mm -hmm. every month you go past FRA. Wow. So when you get to 70, what based on the example on the screen, right. that's 132% of what your FRA was going to be. Well, if I could be guaranteed to get that in my investment account, I'd be feeling fantastic. 8% a year, right. absolutely. Yeah. And so the idea here is this is understanding why Social Security is so important for everybody. Next slide. All right. So... This is the 4% rule. So I, I want to say like sometime in the mid, early 1990s, mm -hmm. this came about. And the idea with the 4% rule says that if you take just 4% of your money, whatever you have, your accumulated assets to live on in retirement, adjusted for inflation, that you should mm -hmm. probably, and there's that term in there, probably be all set, not right. run out of money. Right. The problem is the reality in today is that, for the most part, the 4% rule has not done well over the last decade. Well, because in the 90s when the 4% rule came out, it wasn't an issue getting a, a fixed rate of 5 or 6%. So if you were pulling only 4, then your money is still growing every single year. The issue we found in the last 10 years is that you know a lot of those fixed instruments were getting zero or you know like that one tenth of one yeah. percent they were giving you in your savings <laughs> right, account nothing. as an insult. Um, but now, like I said, in today's environment where the fixed rates have changed, now you're getting four or five, six percent in fixed rates. That rule starts coming back into play. So the issue though is just like you said in retirement, you don't know that risk of return if it's going to be up, if it's going to be down. What environment are you going to be playing in? Right. And so the four percent rule is not a great standard anymore to make sure you're not going to run out. And in fact, most people, when they do this and talk about what's the number that it should be, it's usually somewhere between three and three and a half. Yeah, yeah, being generous, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so next slide. Right, so the idea here with retirement and thinking about retirement, for Craig and I, we use an analogy of climbing a mountain. <laughs> the idea is that in my working years, I'm going up the mountain. That would be accumulation. And is the goal whenever we climb a mountain to get to the top? Well, it's part of it. Well, yes, you do want to make it to the <laughs> Not top. Not to die yes. before <laughs> I get to the top is another goal. You do want to make it to the top. <laughs> However, for almost everybody, the idea is, okay, I've made it to the top. Now I need to get back down safely. Right. I took and my selfies. It's time to head down. Yes. Done all my <laughs> selfies, done all my running around, planted whatever flag I had. And that's sort of the analogy that if you think of the mountain as I'm climbing the mountain in my working years, and once I get there, now I'm going to retire, and I, now I have to safely make my way back down. And that concept is that safely make my way back down, that's where we start talking about taking distribution, mm -hmm. about taking money out of your accounts in such a way that to make sure that it's going to last for the rest of your life. Because that's really what this is all about. It's not how much of a pile that you have. Right, the issue that people don't think about is, you know, all advisors for the most part are focused on accumulation goals. How much of a big pile can I make for myself before I retire? Um, do I get an 8% return, 10% return? What's my return? The issue though in retirement, and as Tom and I do some segments called on the retirement game, is there are so many different rules and tax strategies and all the stuff that comes into retirement that structuring retirement right is really about distribution. How right. do you take money out of what you have in order to make sure you keep as much of it as possible so you have that certainty we talked about? Right, absolutely. So next slide. And so here's that, that in, in a very, very, confusing looking slide but so the <laughs> the concept here is that you have a pile of money whatever that pile of money may be and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how safely are you taking that money out and the lines that are going across the screen are showing 
distribution rates, or what are known as withdrawal rates. Correct. Right? Yep. So you go, the blue line is 3%, the red line is 4%, and green is 5%, et cetera, all the way down to 8%. So this is how much money I'm taking out. So if I own $100,000, I'm taking out 3%, I'm taking out thirty grand or three grand. Three grand. Right. Right. Annually. Annually. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, it says across the board, then on the bottom, it's telling you the number of years. Right. So I've got 15, 20, 25, 30. And, you know, for a lot of people, they used to look at it and go, well, 15, 20 years. I mean, you know, right. what, what, what's that? I'll be 80. I'm done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> In today's world, the average Right, the average life expectancy. Life expectancy. I want to say for female now is eighty-seven. Yes. Right, male yep. it's like eighty-five. Yep. COVID knocked the numbers down. They were a little bit higher before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. But it's eighty-seven right now. That's average. So if you retire at sixty-seven, which again for most of us is FRA, that's twenty years. And an average means well, half of us are going to live longer than that. Absolutely. I mean, how many out there know people in their nineties? Well, so what was the scary one we saw the other day? That that the person who's like like the oldest person living right now is like 113. Yes. That the generation, like our kids' generation, like that number is going to be stretched. It's going to be like 130. Like you know. Right. They're saying that somebody alive today will live to be 150 years old. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you're that one, then you're talking 80 years in retirement. <laughs> right. Which just is just a crazy thought. But when you look at the screen and go across. The idea is to see where the safety comes in. So if we talked about that 3% rule, right? So the, you have the 4% rule, that's, that's the red line, but the blue line is 3%. So if I'm just taking 3% for 20 years, I'm fairly close to almost at 100%. But as Craig said, if I've got a million dollars in my account, mm -hmm. I'm living on $30,000 a year. I don't know that's going to work for anybody, certainly not in the metro, metro west, greater Boston area to be living on. Right. So technically I'm a millionaire, but I'm living on a, a, a poverty level of income. Right. right. When you put 4% in there, you can see when you get into the 20-year mark, you end up at about 96 point something percent. If I go out to 25 years, it's down to almost 90, it's less than 93%, which means you've got a 7% margin of failure. That's not what we're looking for, right? The whole idea here is you don't want to have this up in the air, which is why that angst comes into play for most people of the unsurety of how much do I need. This is the same way I pick my airlines. There you go. <laughs> they got a 97% chance of getting there, but the ticket price is lower. <laughs> so, it was cheap. I got was, a deal. Yeah, right. <laughs> they make it there most of the time. So the, the concept is trying to be aware of wait, I've, I've got this money and how am I going to be taking this money out to make it last? And we'll talk in a little bit about the efficient ways to be doing that. But that's the reality. The reality isn't about so much return. It's about how much can I take out because everything gets added into it. Mm -hmm. The risk and all the other factors that go along. Next slide. Uh, all right, we're not playing the video. I put it in there. I didn't. It's a video, so I'm not putting it in. So you can go to the next slide. We, but there's we, a link if you want to watch it yourself. Sometime. Yeah, you can back there, that up and oh, stop it. Oh, you can back it, right? it up. There is, there, <laughs> you can back that up if you can. Hey. So a link. if you can pop, if you can pop that up on it. So th this is a, a a quick little. It's a, an interesting uh, video. But you, if you pause it and go to the 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 screen, don't run it. It's not. I, I don't want it to run because we're we're not going to do it. Uh oh, uh, you ran it. There you go. Okay. So you just to let you know it will open up. But but the idea here is what it shows is is a brother and sister. One of them retired in 1996 uh, and did the four percent rule and was fine. The other one re retired in 1999, did the same four percent rule, had been invested the same way. The one who retired in 1996 lived comfortably, had well into there, and, and made a great deal in their retirement. The one who retired in 1999 failed. No difference in terms of what they were invested in, no difference in terms of their withdrawal. The only difference is one of them retired before the downturn occurred, 2000, 2001, 2002. The other one had, a, had years to, to offset that and so wasn't as affected as dramatically. And so it's, it's timing, this whole sequence of risk return 
is an issue that everybody needs to be aware of when you're dealing with retirement. Right, because the issue is you don't know. That's why it's called risk re of return. You don't know what years are going to be up and which ones are going to be down and whether you're turning, the t the, turning it on at the right time when you retire, right? Where you start taking the income out as opposed to putting it in. Right. So that's what we want to talk about is how to have some certainty and get around that risk. All right, next one. So this is going to be what's in your buckets, right? So a, a lot of times with this, when we talk about a bucket strategy, we're either talking about savings. In this case, it's about distribution, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that, you know, a lot of times one of the trip ups for retirees is that they try to make their money in retirement do the same, have one asset solve all their problems. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to say here is when you start thinking about income streams, you should be thinking about it. I've got money that's in tax deferred. That would be 401ks, yep. IRAs, that type of thing. I have money that's in after tax. That could be bank accounts, that could be brokerage, mutual yep. funds, et cetera. And then I should have some guaranteed because that's the one like we talked about. That's cash flow. Cash flow equals certainty and certainty takes the pressure off your other monies. And so the, having that guaranteed income, right now for most people, it's Social Security. Mm -hmm. yep. Because pensions don't really exist anymore. And that's where we're talking about trying to set that up. Next slide. Right, so then how can you create your own personal pension plan? Since most employers, certainly the top 100, the Fortune mm -hmm. 100, is no longer have a pension plan, right? The idea here is I need something that's going to be generating an income stream for me, just like my Social Security. I'm going to have some other money set aside mm -hmm. for liquidity purposes, for other expenses. Right. So whenever we do retirement planning, we talk about three really important things. The first thing is always income. Do I have enough income to meet my needs? Right. The second thing is going to be liquidity, because there's always unexpected things that come up. Um, or just because you know you're going on the longest vacation you're ever going to take, you know you sometimes you spend more money when you first start re you know your retirement because you're doing all the things you couldn't do because you were working. Right. Right? The third thing we talk about is protection planning, yeah. right? Because we don't talk about the what ifs things go wrong, uh, medical coverages and you know disabilities, all those things that can actually happen as we age. And then there's actually this fourth leg that we talk about, which is estate planning which is, you know, if you don't spend every dollar of your money, which is the goal, <laughs> um, you know, how do you, where does your money go? Right. Where, does, where does your stuff go? Um, and so that's what we like to talk about is how do you set up the income portion? That's what we're talking about here today. Right. And so the next slide we'll go into, and, and that's if you can talk a little bit about how the covered strategy, the idea of a covered strategy and how that might work for someone. Sure. So in the, in the beginning of the slide here, you're seeing somebody put money into a 401k plan, right? And that's what we've been told to do since the 80s. It's a great thing. You get a match. You reduce your income today because you're reducing the taxes. And it grows tax deferred until you take the money out. So once you get to that point, you've saved a million dollars. You're feeling fantastic about yourself. But as we just talked about with the risk of return, you can only take about 3.5% out to make sure you're not going to run out of money in the next 25 years. Right? Well, that gives you $35,000 a year, and it's not guaranteed, as it says here, because you still have risk of you know, market risk. In a personal pension plan that you're creating for yourself, you're still accumulating the same amount of money, but $750,000 is staying in your 401k, and $250,000 of that is going off to buy life insurance. Right? The life insurance is there to replace that $750,000 should you die early. Right? That's if you have a spouse or somebody else who's dependent on your income. Right, Some, someone who's depending on that money. Correct. So what that does is now you have the 250000 is actually cash value in the life insurance. So that's still the cash that's available. That's still liquid, liquid cash, right? Now the $750,000 that you're now doing is you're creating your own pension or an annuity payout, right? So you, now you're getting a payout rate based on your life expectancy in a pool with everybody else, just like that's how pensions worked in the first place. It wasn't just your own personal bucket. It was this bucket that everybody's in. Right. That's that, what Social Security is. That allows you to get a better payout rate. So now instead of getting that 3.5% payout rate, you're getting a 7.5% payout rate. You're right. doubling the amount of income that you have. And at the same time, you've got $250,000 in liquid cash, which you didn't have in the first scenario. 
And also, if you do pass away, your significant other gets a $750,000 death benefit, which is tax-free, which they can now use to create an income stream. Right, because let's just back that up, because in that situation, you would be, most pensions for the folks out there when you have, if you ever, you know, municipal employees, teachers, those, those folks have access to a pension. Mm -hmm. The pension gives you usually three options. Mm -hmm. The first one is single life, the second one is joint and survivor, and the third one is a cash, you know, it's a period certain, as it is called, right? I'm going to get paid for 10 years or 15 years or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. The maximum payout, the number one payout in the scenario is single life because right. they only have to cover you. Right. But if you choose it and you die in one year, Not that's a, it. It's gone. It's gone. And so in this scenario, as Craig has, has explained, is this is like choosing single life and then having the backup should something happen unforeseen to you in the few short years, then that death benefit pays out where now your spouse or whoever the other significant person is has the ability to then take that money and create their own pension or do whatever they want to do in that scenario. Right. And what you got to remember, too, is if you take option B or C, which is leaving your spouse something if you pass away, that's life insurance. You're getting a reduced payout right. to ensure that someone else is going to get an income stream if you die. That is, but it has no cash value. And if your spouse dies first, it's usually not a pop-up clause. You don't get to right, go back to the original. To go back. So you're stuck at relegated at that lower amount for the rest of your life. Right. Next slide. So this is taking it and doing it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So this is the same concept. It's the same million dollars. It's the same 3.5% withdrawal rate. Again, that's the 35000 that's being there. But instead of doing, as Craig said, creating that individual pension with it, what you're doing is you're leaving the money sitting there inside that cash account that's, that's inside the life policy in this particular case. And much like we talked about with the scenario with those two siblings where one retired in 96 and one retired in 99, had the one who retired in 99 had an alternative bucket, had some place that they could go when the market went down, they would then draw the money out of there. So for the example is, for anybody who retired in 2022, it's not fun for them, right? Everything was bad. If you retired in 2022, you were taking money out and the markets, bonds, everything tanked. So if you came here to 2023 and suddenly found yourself like, I'm pulling money out of these accounts, I don't want to do that because I'm probably going to end up either running out of money mm -hmm. or having to reduce my living expenses. Right. So what would be a better thing is if I had somewhere else I could tap into that I wasn't worried about market volatility, I wasn't worried about interest rates, that I could pull to cover my living expenses, to cover what I need to live on for this particular year, 2023, let all the bruising and battered happen <laughs> that with my investment accounts recover mm -hmm. over this year, so that next year I can start the withdrawal again. In that situation, you end up, if you can do it, so long as you cover, what is it, like one or two in the first five years, or something like that? Yeah, the two to three years in the, in the beginning are what really kill somebody's account if they have two or three bad years up front, right? So if you can cover at least two, I like two and a half to three years to be... Right. right, so if you can cover those, then usually there shouldn't be any issue and you're, you, you would be, well, we don't want to say clear sailing, but you would probably be <laughs> clear sailing from there is ultimately the situation because the idea is you have created this buffer from taking away from your accounts because that's the problem for most retirees that you're, you're withdrawing this money and if there's, you know, against the market volatility, then you're double dipping. The market went down and you also took money out. It's so much harder to try to get back. Right, and the nice thing is, is you know, really you're setting the right pieces up with the right blocks to make sure you can do a strategy when you get to retirement. It doesn't matter which one you do in a covered asset or the buffer strategy. Actually, a lot of times I use a combination of the two. Right. Right, so you create the guaranteed income that's gonna uh, cover all your expected bills. Right, and then you use a volatility buffer to cover all those unexpected things because maybe you spend more money the first five years right. and you don't the next five years because you're traveling a lot and then you decide to stay closer to home. But whatever the plan is, you, you don't have to be hard and fast on either one picking it at 45 or 50 years yeah. old. Right? You, give, you build in flexibility into your plan to, because your life's going to change, your plans may change. Exactly. Next slide. You know, and this just shows you a quick snapshot of what those look like and how the increase and the benefit amount 
can be so much dramatically different. Upwards of 30 to 50 percent more income gets generated this way mm -hmm. than just the, you know, the, the pink or salmon. I don't know what it comes up on the screen there. Uh, is just if you just did your money like Craig said, I just plowed it into the 401k and that's what I was withdrawing and I didn't have these alternatives to help me create either my own pension or some other alternative to it. Right, the same as your plan today. Yes, your plan today, <laughs> if that's what you're doing. All right, so you know that's, that's been our time here. The, the, we say to everybody, listen, we understand there's a lot going on, especially a lot of worries out there, whether that's you know running out of money or where am I invested or how am I doing it or what my plan is. We give everybody the opportunity to meet with us, have a conversation. If you're watching this, hit the pause button, that QR code that's up on the screen, that QR code, just scan that, shoot it, that'll open up our calendar, schedule a time. Otherwise, you can copy and paste. You can see the link in there as well. It'll open copy up and paste it off a TV screen. Oh yeah, that's why they might be watching it on the computer. Oh maybe, yeah, okay. Yeah, but they still are. couldn't copy and paste it. It's a YouTube, it's a tube. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's way too much for me. Anyway, just <laughs> use the QR code. That's why it's there in terms of going through we it. We just don't want you frustrated. I can't get it to copy. <laughs> <laughs> My mouse is not working. Uh, you can always reach us again on the web, AriesFoundation.org. You can email us. That one's got my email in there. It's tlesi at ariesfoundation.org or the general email is info at ariesfoundation.org, whichever works for you. Or like we said, hit the pause button, scan the QR code, our calendar is going to pop up, and then you'll be able to schedule a time. And we're happy to answer any questions. There's never any cost. There's never any obligation for it. We're a nonprofit foundation. That's why we're here. And you can't email Tom and say, I want to talk to Craig. Yes, I, that, that is allowed, that he can do that, it, it is okay. But, but for the most part, that's the idea is you just have the opportunity, you know, you got questions, you got concerns, maybe you're just unsure about what it is that you're looking at or whether or not you're on the right path. But this will give you an opportunity to, to set up a time and then take a look from there. And on that note, we're gonna say thanks and have a great evening.